could be the published meeting room. All I did up there was notice it up that we had come up there, opened the meeting, nothing took place, and we came down here then to convene the meeting for the public. The case before tonight is 22 day 000049. The applicant is the Wheaton BFW. The zoning request for tonight is conditional use to allow the BFW parking lot and gravel drive to be used as an off site parking. The conditional use to allow post owned operated trailers and RVs to be stored on the parking lot to allow for open space of the RVs and trailers. The property is located at 0 North 731 Patworth Street in Wheaton. It is in Milton Township. It is approximately 2.64 acres. It's zoned R4. It is on well and sewer. Tonight's meeting was published in the Daily Herald on November 23rd, 2022, and tonight is December 8th. Jessica, is that Bob on the owner? All right, this is an open meeting, but one of our board members, the chairman, had a family matter to attend to. He is now Zooming. So we have a full board tonight, all seven members. Our six are here, one is on the uh, boat participating. So let's start with who the, who's going to present the case for the VFW. For several of us, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want you to Mr. Gala, and today are, is uh, is going to talk about a good portion of that. Just to get a little bit. Okay, the attorney tonight for the VFW is John Scott, correct? S P O C K. Guilty as charged. Okay. All right. And you are, sir, Leo and Colin. And spell that your last name is part of And would you swear, is that all for your case, counsel? That you and the member of the ATFW, or do you have other witnesses? Well, there may be others that choose to comment. No, I mean, over your case in chief, it's this for our, for our case. Okay, then would you raise your raise hands and be sworn in? You just have a swear from the testimony last day because it's class time here and you should be holding the right one. Just sound like that. Okay, do you have your plan of survey and your site plan? The plan of survey, uh, Mr. Chairman, and the site plan are what are what put together uh, on the same case. Okay. So right. um, I know down there that there is some addition in red uh, magic marker. That's just for ours, Your Honor. If you know down the, we're going to hand you a packet, and there is a added survey that shows the actual improvements that we're asking for. All right, but that's good. But I need an actual exhibit for the record, a clean exhibit that does not have any handwritten. Okay. Once that is done, you will mark that as applicants exhibit one. Is that it, Council? Uh, you've all been given class, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in large class as well as smaller ones, but we're looking for. Just because we have one in the file. Yeah. All right. We will take the one out of the file and mark it as applicants exhibit one. While the attorneys are going ahead, maybe you can find another one and we can substitute it. If not, we have one. Do you have any other exhibits you wish to introduce? Uh, we have a number of exhibits uh, in, in your. Uh, package. Uh, you know, list of them. There's about five different exhibits, but they're all group exhibits. Okay. Uh, the initial is the explanation of all the components. Okay. Uh, 
plan of survey and it also included the and put that up for people to work their best. All right, and then why don't you question? You want to put this in with the group exhibit or do you have a exhibit list? Well, the exhibit list is basically a list of group exhibits. Okay. So the, the plan survey, and we have related photos, we provided those all to you. Then there's the licenses and volunteer certification for the BFW post. And then there's the charters for the BFW post. So that we know that they're all legal. And then the BFW community support, which is a number of letters, emails, and faxes that are as part of your package. All right. All right, but these don't seem to be in any particular order. Uh, well, we put them in the same order for all of you. We, we try to understand right. All right, and applicants exhibit two will be the explanation of proposal. The charter will be applicants exhibit three. The certificate of liability insurance will be applicants exhibit four. A liquor license will be applicants exhibit five. The license to sell alcohol will be applicants exhibit six. The license for a health service permit will be applicants exhibit seven. The certificate of registration for the Illinois business authorization will be applicants exhibit eight. Inspection report uh, will be applicants exhibit nine. Is that correct, Bokar? Well, you're, uh, you know, we tried to provide you with group exhibits. Yeah, but you know, they're not marked, and, and you, you're going to move to them. So, were you listening to me as I went through, or, or can you present me in, in group exhibit form, mark exhibit? Uh, not at the moment. Well, then how would you proceed if you're going to allude to stuff and they're not marked and we'd have no idea where they are and if somebody in the audience wanted something, they, they couldn't go to it. I'll well, tell you what, we'll take a five minute recess and you mark the exhibits the way you want. I will cancel what I claimed as our exhibits and you can give me your exhibit list with numbers. How's that? And then we will proceed. So we will stand in recess. We give you five. Is five minutes enough to mark your tip? Probably not. Probably going to take a little more than that. All right. About how long, Castle? Yeah. Probably, probably ten minutes. All right. Ten minutes, or, or we'll stand adjourned. We, well, I'm not, I'm not going to do that with the public here. You have ten minutes to mark your exhibits, and then we'll proceed. We can wait. The site plan. And I got your attention, just supporting, just so I don't throw you off. How about remember all your exhibits as a group exhibit, too? That, that, that would be great. Some of it, I'm not so sure on point, but we can get to that. Well, yeah, I understand that. I, I understand what we're coming from. And we have a client, they want all the other. Well, they want to be able to put whatever where. Position on a group that their commander, who's going to probably do most of the talking, is uh, is probably as knowledgeable about the post and its affairs as anybody. Uh, okay. I think he can he can adequately give you the uh, uh, items set forth and explain to you the the two issues with respect to the uh, parking school students and the. Storage of parking for five trailers. And I might add that uh, the storage of the summer children, that that's been something that's been done by the post for years. It isn't something that's just brand new. You know, the post has been chartered in 1931. It became a post, a physical post, uh, wh where it was built. And back then, some of the members, uh, and I probably most of us were there back then. Um, some of the uh, members built it and there were railroad ties put in it. It became an operational chapter in 1932, I believe. That's 90 years that they've been there. 
Uh, I understand that there have been, uh, there's been one uh, complaint uh, that they were parking high school students' cars there and that they were parking RVs. Um, the, as I understand it, the person who did the complaining uh, moved into the development across the street on the west side of Papworth approximately 12 years ago and only started having a problem with the VFW within the last three years. All right, be that as it may, the issues tonight are the request for two conditional use. Right. Absent a grandfathering clause, whether one person, two people are more in complaint, you're here to prove up the uh, granting of a condition, the two conditions I, I cited. So do you want to start with your presentation of how you meet the requirements of conditional use. Well, I think I'm, I'm going to permit uh, Leo, the post commander, to start. And oh, you know what? It's like when they had, let me read into the record the information that I overlooked. The building department. The, Depart the uh, Department of Transportation, the Health Department, Stormwater, and Public Works has no objections. Uh, Village of Carroll Stream sent no comments. City of Wheaton sent an objection. It's attached. Village of Gundale Heights said this property appears to be over two miles from our corporate limits, so they have no issue. No comments from Glen Ellen, Winfield, or Milton Township. The, as, and the Township Highway Department has no objection. Wheaton Fire Department, School District 200, and the Forest Preserve had no comments. I was looking through here. I didn't see right offhand the letter from Wheaton. Did you get a copy of this, Council? The uh, copy of the letter from Wheaton? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then, then those we, are the... We received it today. Okay. All right, why don't we start the hearing? If you decide you need time to research or do something to respond to the letter, we can address that now. That's fine. Okay, okay I'm going to introduce uh, Leo Pinkala, the post commander. Uh, he's got a prepared statement. Uh, we recognize that we want to touch on the particular items under the conditional use provision. There's, uh, there's some seven items in here. Uh, he will address them to, to whatever extent he can along with his statement, and I'll attempt to uh, follow up with that. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Under the guidelines of conditional use section 37 14313 a one, it says, impair an adequate supply of light and air to the adjacent properties. <clears throat> the, we have over almost four acres, so not just uh, two and a half acres, it's probably about 3.75 acres of open air. We aren't gonna be invading on anybody's airspace or light. <clears throat> Increase of hazard from fire or other dangerous of said property. That is again, uh, of, of no concern as we aren't adding any additional property to our property. What's been out there has been there for years already with no incidences or harm to anybody. Diminish the value of the land and buildings in the vicinity. Recently, across the street in the Wyndham Court subdivision, a property sold within 24 hours, we have multiple offers above asking. So obviously our actions don't interfere with property value in the area. The property value in the area is holding just fine with us there. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who purchase property enjoy knowing there's almost four acres that their kids and family can play on because we're definitely family friendly. Um, pardon me? You have something to say? Somebody said something. Four, okay. Yeah, you don't have no, I, I heard somebody here to say something. Um, Unduly increased traffic congestion in the public streets and highways. The traffic that's going down the streets now are students going to Wheaton North School, which is a couple blocks away. They're parking their cars on our property. The vehicles, the RVs that are stored there are post members or people who live within the vicinity already. They're not people who live outside the area. You will hear from a couple of people who live around the post that store their RVs there already. The trailers are 
operated by the post or Cub Scout. So there is no additional traffic coming down. Incur additional public expense for fire protection, rescue or relief. There is no need for additional fire protection, police presence or anything. Um, there is no additional bill. member who happened to serve in state in California. You actually were in a conflict to become a member of the VFW. When a service member's contract expires and we re-enter the civilian world, it is often difficult for veterans to adjust to civilian life. They often have difficulties rejoining their old peers, social groups, or even their family entity. This is largely due to their experiences in the military, the sacrifices they made, the military friends they made, made and lost while serving. The emotional and physical scars they carry with them is a heavy burden only another veteran can appreciate. It is these reasons when aerial World War I veterans returned home, they needed a place to call their own, a place where Assisting area veterans, attending functions throughout the area, hosting blood drives and food drives, providing scholarships to students, assisting areas in need after a disaster, providing much need support to veterans, their families, and anyone else needing assistance. A place where members of the community can gather with friends and family. But most importantly, it's the solace the veteran feels when they're among other veterans. Recently, one of our mem members attended various September 11th and Veterans Day ceremonies held around the area, including the city of Wheaton, Wheaton North High School, Belmont Villages in Carroll Street, Glenelg and YMCA, Western Trails Elementary School in Carroll Street, Franciscan Court Senior Living in West Chicago. As you can see, the Wheaton VFW truly is the new page memorial VFW. We don't just support and deal with veterans or families in Wheaton. We go all over the area. Yesterday, members of the auxiliary and myself attended a ceremony held at Stratford Middle School in Bloomingdale. So that's yet another time we, had, we service. Here we awarded four middle schoolers with certificates and financial awards for winning our Patriots Pen Essay Scholarship Program. Members of our post attend welcome home celebrations for honor flight, funerals for area veterans, birthday parties for veterans in nursing homes, speaking engagements, and when able to provide color guard services for area events, as well as events in the Chicago land area, not just Wheaton. We provide these services free of charge. It's a way we can still serve our community and give back. While the VFW is part of a national organization, 
we do not receive funding from any organization or governmental entity. Every VFW is responsible for raising their own funds. As with any not-for-profit, raising funds can be a challenge. We must think outside the box. We must constantly improvise, adapt, and overcome challenges in order to remain in our community. Many years ago, a couple neighbors in our community approached us about ability to store their RV in our parking lot. As we are unincorporated, we did not think this was a problem. We have almost four acres and a large lot we were not a large parking lot we were not using to its capacity. Our members agreed to allow five RVs to be stored on the property. And these residents make donations to the VFW for allowing them to do so. It's a win for both the VFW as well as a win for the area residents who get to keep their RV close to home. Not to mention, they also stop on our post multiple times checking things out. As a side note, we were broken into many times and our neighbors, for the most part, will come over and check on our properties to check on us. The ones who store the RVs there especially. <clears throat> Approximately four years ago, when Wheaton Bowl closed their doors, Wheaton North students lost their much needed space for additional parking. It was at this time we approached Wheaton North High School and offered the ability to use our parking lot for student parking. After all, we have a large lot not used during the day and they need a place to park. They were using our, prop, our parking lot and gravel road already for overflow parking for football games and school events. So for them to ask and us to agree to use a student parking, it was a win for everybody. After a brief discussion, we partnered Wheat North and allowed for daytime student parking. The post benefits by the payments made by the students for parking and Wheaton North benefits by they have spaces for parking students. Right now, they do not have enough parking. They can't park on the street around the school. And we have about 75 passes that we give out. So that would be 75 additional cars minimum that Wheaton North and the community is going to have to find a place for it because the kids are going to go to school and they got to park. So we are providing that service. <clears throat> Fast forward to April 2021. After a long, tedious process, DuPage County issued us a gaming license. That's where it got fun. By three o'clock in the afternoon, when we went live, we set out three signs along Patworth. Three. They said slots. Within an hour, the zoning board was at our facility because they had complaints from three people who live in the Wyndham subdivision. Let me just, and let me preface, I think everybody in this room will agree that the public owes a debt to anybody that served their country. But one of the reasons you served this country was to make sure that the laws were adhered to and enforced. So whether somebody complained about the slot machines, unless you can tie it into the conditional use, I'm getting too far off. I've given you a lot of attitude because I have so much respect for veterans. But if, if you would give me the latitude, the next statement, Your Honor, will show. Will show. Huh? The next statement we're looking at that would show where it came in. Okay. Because of the complaints, zoning came out and issued citations for the RVs, student par and parking, and the, the signs. I want to point out up until that date, Nobody in our community complained about RV parking or student parking. So the point I was making was that's what set the ball in motion. The only problem with that is you have a zoning code. Whether somebody complains or not, if it's seen, somebody complains or something causes it to be brought to the surface, it's wrong. That's why I asked if it was grandfather. You don't have a grandfather clause. So Regardless of somebody's complaint, you now have an issue to address the condition we, of the use of the We did naively think that because we're unincorporated, we thought we were uh, commercial zoned. That's why we allowed it. We naively under thought that. When we learned of the R4 status and the zoning that had to follow, 
we did indeed follow the proper steps, which leads us to here today. The funds that are generated from these events that we do, whether it's the parking or whether it's RV storage, is used to allow us to stay open. We have six scouts that we charter. I understand this has nothing to do with the zoning, Your Honor, but it's to explain that we have six scouts we charter, six troops. groups, six troops, okay, that we charter. We give them our facility free of charge. We give the police free of charge, first responders, educators free of charge. The reason we can assist our community is because we find alternate ways to make money. And that's what we have to do in order to survive in a day today where not-for-profits are closing, coming off of COVID, businesses are closing. And we have to think of a way of doing this. If we put all of our eggs in one basket, we will definitely lose. We have been a pillar in this society, in this community for 91 years without incident. 89 of those years was without a complaint. We, the veterans, are coming to you, the board, and asking you to support us just as we supported you and the community for 91 years. And all of the members serve this country, as you said. And we aren't asking for anything special. That's why we're here. But other people got things without getting here. If you'd like an example, Wheaton Bowl never had a special use permit to park Wheaton North students. And when asked at the zoning hearing at the court, how did Wheaton Bowl get away with it for years? Because I graduated Wheaton North in 1987 and they were parking students there then. The answer I got was yes, but we have a complaint against you. So because there's a blind eye for Wheaton North, because there was no alleged complaint for at least 40 years, the post gets the hammer. I'd like to draw your attention. This is our plan of serving. As you can see, our plan goes from Geneva. Probably can talk louder than that much. Corner Road of Pathworth in Geneva comes all the way down to, to the lot past our post. For most of you know that. Okay. But also L shaped over here off of Darling. This big gray area is our parking area. This is the improved lot. This is our building right here. This is the gravel road that the best of my knowledge came in in 1950s because that's what's on the plat on the county's own website. This road right here that's been used for additional parking has been there for 1950s. It's not new. Matter of fact, it used to be wider so the grass over grew, grew on the gravel. Currently, we have five RVs and two trailers parked along the L shape of our parking lot that is on the north east side of the parking. We did that because it's parking spaces there. We can line them up and we thought it looked decent. We weren't trying to make our post look like a sham. We weren't trying to bring the property value of any post, anybody around us. We did it trying to be nice. However, this is Pathward. Over here is a subdivision. For whatever reason, it's not viewed as being socially accepted. So our proposal, Your Honor and Board, is if you will look on your plat, you will see gray hash marks that go, they are east of our property, east of our building. It's a parking lot. It is improved pavement. Our proposal is to ask for to park the five RVs and the four trailers in that area, not to go past the northeast corner. That would eliminate anybody from that subdivision seeing anything there. As well as on the three sides, it is not 
by our property of trees. From the south side, the east side is our trees and park and our lot. So the west side will be our building. So the only visible way somebody will see it would be at Geneva Road. Okay? It won't be seen. It will be behind the corner of the building. That's what we're asking for for the storage of the RVs and motorhomes. Or the trailers, excuse me. Our parking lot. Self-explanatory. We want to park cars there. We want to park student cars there. We want to park our own cars there. We thought we were doing the community service by allowing them to park. I later learned it's not a service. It's a, that we actually have to come in here and pay about fifteen thousand dollars to allow students to use our to use our students to use our parking lot to do a community service. We're paying. So seventy five cars we can park there. The gravel road can be used as excess. It's been used for excess since the fifties. But. The majority of the cars can park right here. We tell the students to park on the grant on the asphalt, the hardball, but some of them are in a hurry. You got kids, most of you. Do they listen to you every time? No, they'll come flying in. They park right there on the gravel road. Okay. It's not many, maybe five or six will park there. The rest will park on the glass blacktop asphalt. That's the acceptable proposal. We aren't asking for additional storage space. We aren't trying to make four acres of RV storage. We aren't trying to take the four acres to Geneva Road. That's our property for RV storage. We're literally trying to use the already improved lot for storage of RVs and trailers, which we have been doing. I'd like to point out the scouts that we charter, we legally own their property. That's what the charter is. We have to own their property. They can't legally own it. That means their trailer, their in blue cooler, their anything that they own, their matchbox cars, we own. It's part of chartering them. If we lose the ability to store that, we will also lose the ability of chartering scouts. It is what it is. But tell the scouts that are here that they got to find a new home because we just got two scout troops from St. Michael's Church because they kicked them out a month ago. Had no place to go, came to us and we welcomed them with open arms. So if you wanna kick them out of our home, it's not on me because I welcomed them. I'd like to thank everybody for letting me hear my rant. Just a couple questions. How many scout troops do you have now? Six. And do you plan to put a cap on it? Or is it just one scout That's the most I can do and it took me the reason we took the last two was because literally they came from St. Michael's Church. It's Wheaton. We're Wheaton. How do I turn away people from St. Mike's Church? I, no, that's not what I was saying. I understand. So that's why we literally, my team and I, sat and said, how can we make this happen? I incurred expenses to redo my second story of our first building just to allow scouts the ability to have a place to have meetings. So I do not plan on bringing our scouts, I know. All right, how about with the RV? Is that purely revenue generating or do they serve any other purpose? Both. Right. They do generate funds for us and they also serve the ability that we have access to. If you will look in your packets at your leisure, you will see trailers being loaded with supplies. Those trailers are on our property. We take those supplies, we rent trucks, Went to Kentucky, Southern Illinois for flood victims, tornado victims. Stuff goes to Florida for her, for tornado you know, hurricanes. So we use these things as a way to get to where we're going quickly. We our VFW motto is nobody does more for veterans. But the second part is we say we're still serving. So our community may not all be veterans, but we still love them and we help them. We never if if a, a community member asks us for help. We are there for them. Does anybody reside in those mobile homes? No. Is there electricity or any money to go with them? No. They're strictly storage. Some of the people will be here. They can tell you it's storage. Well, I'm sure we're going to hear both sides. 
Um, why don't we stop there? Do you have anything else for your presentation? Other than to say that we allow fast audience to provide their thoughts on it. I one small thing, and you know, referring to and you were referring to you just like. There are Okay, and you would agree with me. I, I, I'm not sure if it was in your presentation, but it's zoned R4, and under that zoning, these are acceptable conditional uses. I, I would argue that they are in this instance, yes. And then if they are conditional uses, we have to show a unique reason why they should be turned out. If they fit anywhere else in the R4, they have to have a unique reason why it can't be used. Well, I think, I, I think that would certainly make sense. Yes, I think, and I think that's correct and consistent with what the, the statute of the ordinance provides. I think before we go further, I'm going to ask if the board has any questions. Please start with Dennis. No, I just um, I, I want to hear why. I want to hear discussion on who is against this and we, what's the conflicts in their code. I'd like to hear their voices. All right, yeah, we'll get to that. That's all. Does anybody? I don't, I don't know. Know. <laughs> okay. I didn't serve a four in war, but my wife is a veteran. And I went back to the community too by sitting on this board. And I have to do all people's stuff. So I love what you do. It's actually, I'm part of it. all kinds of stuff that didn't actually Our job is to make sure if we did do this petition, I have a question for you. There was some arguments you hear saying that people were living in RVs. Is that true? No. So what somebody might want to tell you is <laughs> that they're living in an RV is we are known as a harvest host. We have four acres. A harvest host is a private club where people might have an RV that are traveling the country. They'll call us. I get their name, their phone number, their membership number, everything about them. They're going to ask me, hey, I'm traveling through today and I stay through tomorrow. We say yes or no. We allow two to three, depending on who it is or how big it is, what time of year it is, up to three at the most. Um, in the summertime, when we don't have student parking or anything, it's you know three will allow, but they're in and out. So they're going to refer to that as living in the RVs. They're not. They're not our RVs being stored there. They are people traveling through, which is also part of a VFW tradition that allows veterans to come through. You will hear from somebody tonight, I'm sure, who took care of that program and then they moved to this area. Um, it's not shady people. Our opponent, you know, our, our adversary, our, you know, the, the people complaining, I want to sit there and say that we bring in shady people, riffraff and prostitution was the terms used. Two oh, that could be proved up. That would be a part. But I think the point is it's great if you cater to people traveling through. And then if you open it up from the state area, you now would have to make another condition that you want to be in it or a bed and breakfast or whatever. It, it's, it's a great that you want to expel, you know, expand that, but you can't just get the people living on a site. It's not allowed. Them. They're not living. It's no different, sir, than there is no ordinance in Wheaton or Uncorp that does not allow for overnight travel. So if a, if a RV, a tractor trailer, or somebody sleeping in their truck, stops at Jewel overnight and sleeps, that's allowable. There's nothing in the ordinances anywhere that doesn't allow it. So it's no different than us allowing that on our four acres. They're not living there. They're passing through and it is done everywhere. Walmart's, Cabela's, Jewel, when you drive around the old Dominic's on Geneva Road, trucks stay there overnight. Well, so the answer is you know, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just tell you though, in all due respect, uh, hearings before us with Walmart and that, we have 
deny truckers to come early, park in your truck, wait on home. I think the zoning code, it just, you can back if it's, but it does not allow for that, correct? So absent, if, if, if this was to go ahead, I'm gonna, it may not make you happy, but it might be a condition that you can no longer allow that. Yes. Unless you want to amend and ask and see if you can prove up having, I don't know, traveling veterans stay there for, on occasion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think yeah, if you're aware, there is, it's called the van life. People, because of COVID and other things, they, they buy vans, they buy vans they live in. I know some people, you know, they're, 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 they're going across country, learning great things about our, our country. Um, they can work from anywhere. It's called a, a nomad life. These are great people. These are CEOs. These are others. So I, I think that is an issue that we should discuss about. It's not a bad thing. And that is happening more and more. Um, and I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I just... Let's let's take it to the new world here that people are traveling in their RVs around this country now. So we have to figure out. Well, I, I'll, I'll put that. it back on you when you were on the county board. Mm -hmm. That's why you would change the zoning. Sure. But we have to enforce codes as they stand. Absolutely. So I bet that's, that's the only problem. I well, have. then it, I would amend my application on space if I'm allowed to, to include the harvest house. It's literally every now and then two people coming through. They are logged every day. We know who they are. We have phone numbers, email addresses, membership numbers. We have their license plate numbers. We have everything. We have been doing that program for three years. Never once had an incident with anybody. They support the community as well. Back to my question. So, yes, what they are. Not so. All right, if you want to amend this, we will have to republish and reconvene. And then we can do it at another time. I can I can I can come back for a different okay. thing. Right. If if we vote for this petition. I would like some numbers. How many RVs do you want to park? In? Five. Five. And then at first you said two trailers. And you said it's, two there, there are a total of three trailers on there right now. Could be up to four, depending on when they come through and if we need it or not. So four is at the most, and there's no more than five RVs. And then from this drawing, it's hard to see, but you're looking for 75 parking spots. Is that what I'm getting from allowing offsite parking? That's what we the most we've sold to Wheaton North. Um, in the four years we've been doing this, we have sold anywhere from about 60 to 72. Depends on the year, whatever their membership is at Wheaton North and who needs the offsite parking. So 75 is a good it's usually the is the high is the high if we're gonna go because that's just basically what we can put on the property. And we need this kind of stuff so we can make a good decision. Well, you, yes, and, and to, again, if we, we don't get the student parking, they got to park somewhere. Again, thank you for all you do. Uh, quick question. We brought up that they do not always park in the designated parking spot, but now you said you charge them. So you're in, working in conjunction with the school, correct? So the school could enforce that if people don't park in the specific area, they lose their right to park. We we are enforcing that. We go out there and we'll stick to the cars every morning if they're not parked there or they don't have a permit. So we have been. The, the last year we started having them towed out. And, and for those of you who don't have never met an irate beaten mother who your kids <laughs> car is towed. My quarter minister can tell you all about that because we had about 12 of them come in and, and try to do things to him that he no man should ever hear. <laughs> and the just the fact that they deferred left their way. So, so we try to we do sticker it, but if we tell it, understand we've got irate mothers coming to our door, which we, we, we've done, but we also aren't trying to make enemies of our neighbors as well. Uh, my, my concern with the RVs are, is as far as. Uh, Every RV has got a bathroom. Where are they going to dump it at? Every RV has a bathroom, 80 gallons of fresh water, 40 gallons of gray tank, and 40 gallons of black tank. When it fills up, you can go to Wheat Sanitary for free and dump it three miles away. Yeah, but do you know, when you pull in there, it's like in a football game. They pull out of the, the parking lot, they drive down the road with the tank stumping on the highway. Well, I can tell you, I guess I've never done it because I live there, I live in the area. And so we can we don't want to make a decision on assuming somebody's gonna do so we want to make a decision on what actually happens and nobody has ever done that that we do that and so and again these are we're asking right now sir on 
the ability to store because the ability to have overnight parking has been tabled for another time. When somebody's storing their part, their RV on our property, it's already dumped and they're doing everything. They're not going to come on our property and dump a tank. You just stated that uh, parking overnight, you were going to do that some other time in front of us? That's just what the, we, we discussed, correct. It is, we're not amending it on its face. It's being a different time. So this is strictly for RV storage. And again, it's not for four acres of RV storage. It's literally five RVs. And we're gonna say four trailers. Just one further question for me, and then we will move on. The letter from the city of Wheaton, the gist of it was that if the entire area was black topped and there was some type of fencing or screening put up, it could make it more acceptable and aesthetic for the surrounding area. So the whole area is black top that we're parking on. The, the road right here is actually asphalt shavings little piece of useless information. Those shavings came from the Carroll Stream Post Office. When they got a new parking lot, we got a new one. They came right over here and it was dumped and it was spread by a local company. And that's what the students, if they come down, there's two entrances, one off of Geneva, off by Papworth, on Papworth by Geneva, and another one by the post home. They can park along this gravel road right here, which is as compacted asphalt shavings, or in our parking lot, which is asphalt. I'll give you, it's got some potholes, but it's $120,000 to replace. And in the last two years, we put $70,000 into our post home cash. So, and just this hearing alone is gonna cost us over 20. So all the resources we generate from every avenue that we generate from, we try to save to replace this and we pull resources. There's somebody here today who we've been speaking to for two, three years trying to get it done. We are in constant communication with people to get our asphalt done, but it ain't cheap, it ain't easy, and you got conform conforming laws and everything else that opens up a lot of cans of worms when we do it. So it is on our radar, but again, over $70,000 has been invested in our post home. New roof, new soft gutter downspouts, uh, new AC unit on the roof, painting, it, it, it ain't cheap. And we don't get money from somewhere else. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point, this is how it's going to go. We will now open it up. Does any board member have any other questions based on that? All right, we're gonna open it up for comment. Everybody that wants to speak will, will have their turn. We limit it usually to three minutes. If you are an adjacent homeowner, we may go to five minutes. Depending on how many wanna speak and how far we'll get, we'll see it for that tonight. At the close of that, Council will make the closing statement. So how many people want to speak tonight? Well, not as many as I thought. All right, everybody, uh, uh, all right. To avoid chaos, just keep going up. The people that are going to speak, you can speak, make a comment or ask a question. Would you stand up and be sworn in? Would you raise your right hands, please? You be soundly swore from the testimony you got to give this class now. The hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and not the whole truth. So help me that. All right, here's how it'll go. We'll start on the front row, unless somebody has an overriding desire to be first. We'll just go down the rows. When you come up, if you would state your name, spell your last name, give your address, and start out by saying, I'm for it or I'm against it, so we can put together what you're saying. A lot of times people speak and you leave and we have no idea what your position is. If you hear other people speak and you agree with it, we don't need to hear it five, six times. It's very simple to just say, I agree with the statements made by the person ahead of me, or I agree with all their statements, but I have a real important thing to bring to your attention and give us that. So at this point, we're, we'll start with the uh, whoever wants to speak. We'll start right with you, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, I I'm Susan Bianco, B I A N C O, and I live at 2020 Wyndham Circle. I live right across the street from VFW. I've lived there for 15 years. I strongly support them and everything that they do, all their, their cause. And I have no problem with the off-site parking for the high school students during the day. 
um, as, as has been going on in the last few years. But however, I do submit that that an approval for this conditional permit should not move forward with the without further details. Um, I think that the request is written too vaguely, and I just I I don't I don't quite understand why there can't be more detail that would make it more clear on what exactly they're trying to um, approve here. So I can give some examples about what I mean. Just um, reflect, like what detail? Like for for example, for parking, is it only passenger cars or is it commercial vehicles, eighteen wheelers? We've had eighteen wheelers there before. Is it not? You know what? For my, for parking, my understanding is their request is to allow the students in their personal vehicles, maybe pickup trucks. I don't know if they all get uh, to park there, and then the trailers for the Cub Scouts and the RVs. And why does it not spell that out in what we see in the um in I guess what we saw here? Maybe there's more detail that I haven't seen, but the publication shows what the request for conditional use is. The testimony is what brought it out. Up to 75 cars. Okay, speed. so that's the detail that uh, I guess I'm looking five for. Five RVs and uh, four trailer trailers. Okay, yeah, so I think those when are... we're saying trailers, you're talking about those things that are pulled behind a truck that the Cub Scouts use to kind of cargo and cargo type. Like a moving okay. okay. Yeah, I think it's. I just misunderstood how this worked, and if all the details are spelled out here, and we clearly define how many RVs and what those are, those RVs are not overnight. Oh, that was my concern: is that it was going to turn into a overnight parking situation where we could have who knows how many cars parking overnight for how long, um, and there would be no. Oh, it would be kind of an open-ended thing. That's that's my concern. And I was hoping that maybe there that would that would be the, part of this. Everybody else, I understand, kids will park there during school hours unless there's a function. Yeah, at other time where the school needs to use it, the school is allowed to use it for a function during overflow. If the students want to park there for a football game, their pass doesn't allow for that, but we do allow us. To do it. But the student parking is specifically for the, uh, the during the day. Again, we've been doing this for years where they park at for football games and stuff. We didn't know it was against the rules, but it's literally been going on for generations. So, and just a quick question, so that maybe it will negate the need for a comment by the public. Now, if you don't have any obtrusive lighting that's shining out the parking lot into people's homes, or you don't play loud music. So, we have eight lights around our property. We use one. By our flagpole to shine on our on our parking lot as a courtesy to our neighbors. Because if we light up all those lights, it's going to be like a, a football field, baseball field, it's landing strip. So we only use one on the above our flagpole memorial that comes down, and we have it set to go out at 3 a.m. I believe. Loud music during the summer. We'll have car shows or something. And we'll have bands out there, but they're usually done by eight o'clock. So I was before that you don't have kids doing road rallies all afternoon or yeah. Uh, so I guess it, um, just basically, I just wanted more closure on what RV, what that meant for the RVs, because we have had RVs parking there overnight, as, as was mentioned. So I just want to make that clear that it's not part of this um, permit. Now this condition permit. Uh, if it's granted, the request is for up to five RVs that would stay on the property. Okay. Those were those are mainly my my concerns. So I'll, I'll leave this for to other people. I go next. I was gonna go down the road. You have somewhere to be? Yes. Except, you know what? No, I'm gonna go down. I said it okay. because then somebody back there is gonna say, Yeah, but this person here is gonna say, Yeah, but I'm before there. It's I, there wasn't that many. I think there was only two more in this in the whole front row. Who's next? Hi, my name is Kimberly Anderson. I live on Geneva Road. I just want to say that I greatly appreciate the veterans and I'm grateful for their service. Oh, and I would just call your name for her. Anderson A Kimberly A N D E R S E N. State your address. 25W021 Geneva Road. Um, I greatly appreciate the veterans and I'm grateful for their service. And I would love to see more services devoted to supporting them. My family has visited the VFW before. We've gone to the car shows. Um we enjoyed that, but I do not feel comfortable bringing my children into the VFW hall because there's usually drinking, gambling, and smoking, which I don't feel are appropriate for young children. For my children, my children, on their parents, other children can do what they want. I've been in the VFW hall a few times. I go in there to vote. I've dropped out food for the pantry. But like I said, for my children, I don't want to bring them in. 
Um, I live near the hall. I'm not directly behind it, but my children's school bus stop is on Marion Avenue. And there have been a few things that have happened that have been questionable. For example, a few times a stray dog has run out into our park, into um, the school bus, and no one has been with it. It used the bathroom on a neighbor's um, lawn and it wasn't picked up. We were able to find the owner of the dog, and it was someone who was parked on the lot in a van with a young daughter that came to get the um, dog. And we've seen the dog several times after that. Luckily, the dog did not bite anyone, but the kids were scared, and it was right before the bus came. So there was about 10 kids there. And the kids just didn't know how to react to the dog. And we just didn't want the dog to get hit by a car. Um, like I said, it didn't hit anyone. It was nice. And we found the owner. And it was someone staying in the parking lot in a van with a daughter. It seems that they've been there for the past two years. I'm not quite sure. There's also been several people in the parking lot creating noise late at night. I have no problem with the high school students parking there because they leave at 3, 4 o'clock. That's fine. They don't stay late at night and create noise. Um, also, when we wait for the bus, sometimes the kids kind of play by the trees in the woods. And there's a lot of beer bottles, cigarette butts. It's not clean. It's not kept up. Um, and I'm just wondering that for the people um, where the RVs will be parked, like I said, what's the screening process? Like he said, I know there's like a process for it, but what's the screening process? Is there background checks on the people who are coming in? You know, I'm not quite sure. I thought all that much guy it's their member and we split off on the overnight he went through that he explained where the new people yes but we've seen a family like i said parked in a van so i'm not quite sure what if they're getting background checked for child molestation drinking drugs for things like that you know what's going on or like yes that's fine and then you should call in if you have somebody living there and report it to the okay. county sheriff. Okay, thank that's you. That's not within our purview. Okay, that's fine. And, and, and they can, with the fair bottle, I just make a good comment. Boy Scouts are here. Do a, you're doing uh, some type of service. You need to come up with your boss. And I have a little bit of a prepared thing for you. Sir. You have a wish to provide the board. We're just for or again. Anybody else in the front row? Is that your way? Yeah, you should go for it. Good evening. We have somebody watching her. The position of yes, that's intimidating. Yeah, oh, sorry. The petitioner. Okay. Please don't threaten her. You know what? I know what it was. You can stand there out of this, you know, to be nice, in case you had questions. There are no questions directed to anybody except the board. And then we'll go from there. Okay. My name is Amanda Neske, N O E S K E. I live at 401 Marion Avenue I'm in Wheaton, and I'm against the RV parking on the VFW uh, parking lot. I would like to present to you the petition that we've had signed by other people in the neighborhood. Um, who are also against, who should I hand this yeah, to? Did you, is it, did you pass it or whoever passed it, who passed it? Um, I passed it, um, Deborah Cook passed it, um, that gentleman. Are they notarized? They are. Oh, then, then we don't have to worry about who was there to have it notarized. Yeah, just, uh, we'll mark that as, uh, you're against it. I guess. All right, objector one uh, exhibit. And where should I place it? Just put it there and then we'll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you want to counsel? Do you want to look at this while we're going on? Oh, that would be appreciated. All right, really nice sir, for my life. Take it if you feel the need to have a continuous to address anything that comes up that we'll address that. Okay, thank you. I also want to say that we appreciate the mission of the VFW. I have family members who are veterans. 
Um, we have lived by the VFW for the past seven years with, I would agree, very few incidences. Two years ago, trailers started showing up, campers started showing up on their property with power cords running to the campers. People will put chairs out, barbecues, tables. They are there for more than one night. I've spoken to individuals as I have walked through the VFW who told me that they're living there on a temporary basis, but more than for a single night. Um, they claim that they're family friendly. However, recently they have posted no trespassing signs in front of our neighborhood and on the other side. Oh, right about here, right by the bus stop. We don't feel comfortable allowing our children to go in that general area without us there. We stand at the bus stops with them. I have an email from a senior who graduated from Wheaton North last year. She was parking in front of our house and walking through the VFW where she encountered people living in the RVs there and who were harassing her. She wrote an email. She would like me to give it to you as well. I spoke with our realtor and she confirmed that we would see a 15% decrease minimum in the value of our property and surrounding properties should the RVs be allowed to park there. Not to mention increased time on the market instead of 30 days, we are looking at more like 90 to 120 days. This is all hearsay and should not be admitted. I understand we're not in the court of law. Dad about it with an email, but for whatever weight it's gonna be assigned, I was gonna give some way, uh, give them way to keep up. I just wanted to write one thing. Thank you. The land, In front of the parking lot, um, those that's open land. Um, our neighbors have been harassed while walking their dogs. The VFW has called the police on them for walking their dogs in that area. That doesn't come across as neighbor or family friendly. A few years ago, an unfortunate event did happen at the VFW where a semi-truck driver parked his truck at the VFW and proceeded to commit suicide inside his his cab of his. You know, so let, me, let me do this. So Unless you can tie this into why the conditional use should be done. If a truck pulls off the road and goes in or the guy does something, I don't know how they can do against it. Uh, if it's their property, I guess they have the right to tell people not to come on it. Uh, okay. I, I forgot your other one. Um, I get if now we if we told it. I think the statute does not allow or the code to have overnight people stay here. I guess the exception would be though, get somebody come to your house with an RV and visit you, like you know, the movie on Christmas with your cousin. I, I think you know, they, you probably under this you could have somebody come and visit and park there. It probably could be more than one day. They just can't make it a residence. If that happens, then I suggest you call the zoning or the sheriff's office and have that addressed. Um, the only other thing, and I, I guess just to keep the record clear, your real estate agent said it will affect your real estate value. But my understanding is from the telephone, these mobile homes and everything have been there, but homes selling. So you, you're going to need a little bit more. There's latitude, but I don't know who you're real estate person is, and if, if she's an air conditioning guy, uh, installer, and then says, I know everything about real estate, you almost have to qualify her. But we'll give way to you. You believe your home value would go down, okay? Thank you. I purchased my home seven years ago. There weren't trailers or RVs on that property. Now there are. 
They started coming in two years ago as the pandemic hit, and they haven't moved since. That I mean, has something you should have let off with because okay, we heard about the entire history, and this has been going on for a long time. So we're dealing with about a six or seven year period. Correct. I um yes, seven years ago I purchased my home. There were not RVs here. They had trailers tucked in the back. That's correct, but they did not have RVs there. They do now. And those RVs have not left in two years. They have power cords running to them and people stay in them for longer than a single night or two nights or three nights. They have, they are there and they are living in those RVs. Those are things for identification of the audience. If this is to be passed, it's a conditional use. We can put on whatever conditions within reason and under the law that the board deems appropriate. Then they can determine if it is bad with these conditions. Does it allow them to go forward or they have to not do it? I do have a question. If they have these conditions, who is responsible for upholding and making sure that these conditions are followed? My understanding right now is that they have citations and yet those RVs have not moved. So they're ignoring the citations that they've been given. They are not doing anything to abide by the law when it comes to that. What makes it, who's going to be the one who, who monitors that? Are we going to have to continue to call the county and complain and have them just ignore the rules? Well, I'll just that, like this, there's no, I, I don't think you have the right now to answer those this is within our uh, with that, it would be the county that enforced. But second of all, Jessica, does, is that, has this been red tagged or cited? All right, so at this point, it's red tagged and cited. So it's in the hearing process. So it's, they'll have to address that and argue it. So that's where it's at. But for everybody's knowledge, when we do a conditional use, we revisit three to five years. And if they've not adhered to it, the conditional use is revoked. So having said that, that will that, does that answer your questions. So just so that I'm clear, so even though they've been cited, is that correct? By the county? Cited, but it, till, till you prove that they're, they're guilty of it, the county can't do it. So they're, it's in the hearing process. Okay, so chairman. Could I add something on to maybe we can get to the in Jessica, you may want to bring the state's attorneys involved with this. Wait a minute, I don't think you need to give people to bed. Thank you. Okay. I'm, a, I'm asking that the state's attorney civil division and, it, I and think criminal I division. Thank you. I'm asking that the state's attorney's office be uh, uh, um, consultant on this. We have a new state law starting January 1st. It's called the Safety Act. And there's many complex areas. I'm not a lawyer, but that you, if basically someone came to your house and trespassed and they just decide to kind of move in or take up residence in your front driveway, they can't be moved. They'll just be cited. So I like to know how this all plays with what it is. So if we can get a, um, um, a um, not a decision, but uh, some advice from the state's attorney's office, how this all relates, because we do have a new state law starting January 1st. All right, just a quick point. Staff has told me that they were cited, there was a hearing, and that's why, as a result of that, they had to apply for the conditional use. Do you agree with that, Council? Yes. Okay. So that's it. Cited, found to be wrong, and then told to, to rectify it by doing a conditional use. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Brother, she's the boss. Uh, thank you uh, for everybody here. My name is Brad Neske, uh, N-O-E-S-K-E. And uh, 
I live at 401 Marion Avenue, so just across the street from the VFW. Um, I agree with everything that Amanda and the previous people have said, and I do oppose uh, the requests here by the VFW. Um, I would just add to that, and I, I, I feel strongly that if the VFW did wish to have this pass, that they would be putting their best foot forward in the community, as they like to point out, and maybe cleaning the area and also providing the area as they have requested it to be used. Because currently, um, as it has been pointed out, there are approximately five RVs parked in an area that they have not asked for use uh, within the parking lot. So I would imagine that that would be something that they would have addressed prior to asking for this special use permit. Uh, it's just kind of setting a good example for the community. Um, we are all in the community and we all support the VFW and the VFW mission as well as, as, well as veterans. Um, I think there's no doubt about that. Um, we've all been to the facility. We, you know, we appreciate everything that is done, but we really feel that it is a, it's a, a community effort and a community um, involvement. And we'd like to see more effort on their behalf. If they truly want to have this passed, to have that uh, set an example of what they truly would like for their, their community that they do also live in. Um, so that's, that's all I have. All right, so, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. I am for the um, the conditions. My name is Selena Moreno. You can either lean in or something or speak up because okay. it's got to be for the recording. Okay. And, I, and, and you know. I'd like the youth of America to take an interest in all this now. But one thing we don't do, how long is that? You're, you're, are you going to read from that? No, I'm only going to read from some of it. I'm not going to read from all It's of just, we, we, in the past, when someone has five, six pages, we just say submit it and then do it. So go ahead. My last name is spelled M-O-R-E-N-O. -O. I live in Bolingbrook, 227 Hampshire Lane. And the only thing I'd like to say from this is uh, I claim to argue that it, the VFW is a very family friendly place. I've been going there long before, or like ever since I was like a baby. And although there are, although there is a bar, there is alcohol and stuff. As I was younger, I've, the bar place has been restricted to younger children. They were not been allowed in there. So no kids have been exposed to alcohol if they go into the post. Um, as to the parking, although it's not exactly the best place, like as in the uh, cleanliness of it, I would say if the RVs, although they're not entirely sure like personality-wise, the type of people they're allowing in their parking lot, they still have all the information. So if they're doing something illegal or doing something bad, they have enough information to um, get them off the property if, uh, what, if the people in the RVs are really causing a problem in there. Um, this, the VFW really is a great place to be um it has it's a place where my grandfather is a part of it James Lopez he he came to this post after serving over 20 years and it is really a night it really is a place to go for um, being part of the community I have witnessed the good that the post does for the community and veterans around. They've done just wonderful things that, a lot that I can't really list right now, but 
I would say they deserve to continue helping these people that need a place to stay. And even though some people may have stayed over time, as long as I would say they haven't caused too much of a problem, if it's coming, like if it's escalating, then I would say you would have to do something. But if it's just something like minor, then I would say it's not that much of a problem. And because it's not on the, the residence as in the area, um, like the neighborhood, as long as nothing's going from the post to that neighborhood, like directly disturbing the neighborhood like intentionally, then unless it's something like that, I would say there really isn't a problem with the RVs being on the parking lot. Thank you. That is all I have. Thank you. Should be proper, very well spoken. Hello, my name is Yvette Lopez, L-O-P-E-Z, and I am in support of the post. Um, my address is 227 Hampshire Lane in Bolingbrook. And I just wanted to say that in adding to what my daughter mentioned, um, my father served over 20 years and became a member of this post. My mother serves on the Women's Auxiliary. Uh, my brother currently serves as a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. So I am one proud daughter and one proud sister. And both my children, um, our older son is also in the Air, the Air Force Junior ROTC, serving as a on the command staff, which is why he cannot be present today. But um, all of us are in support of this post. We have been coming for, for years. As Selena said, we've been coming since before she was even born, since, since my son was before he was even a thought. And I've never had an experience that made me feel uncomfortable or unwelcomed. I cannot speak to your experience, but from my own, I can say that I've, I've never felt like I couldn't bring my children here. They were always welcomed. It was always a very family-friendly type of environment for us. And it's always been a pleasure to go back. The kids look forward to going. Even to this day, they are greeted like family. And everyone is just that at this post. We are like family. We just had a holiday party. And um, I have to admit, it's been a while since I've been there. But the moment I walked in, everybody, like I said, we're family. Everybody greeted each other. And it was just a wonderful time. And there were no concerns. There were no fights. There were no silliness or, or any anything like that um, from being drunk or anything like that. Um, one of the things I wanted to say is, you know, the commander mentioned all the good that the VFW has provided to the community. And we know that there are VFWs across the nation. This post serves as part of that legacy. And I would hate to see revenue that is so desperately needed be taken away from them to the point where they may lose the post as a result. Everybody knows about the struggles, especially since COVID has hit. And so every dollar counts. And I really believe that there's a way to make this work that can make everybody, make everyone happy. Um, this place is it, more than just a place for the veterans. It's a place where they connect. It's a place where they share experiences. It's a place that they could share together that unless you've served, you cannot relate to them on that level. This is their home away from home. And so for things to be taken away from them that would generate that revenue, they're going to lose more than just a place. It's, it's again, they're away from home. It's a place for them to meet with each other, to learn from each other, to help other people. And it's, it's a place where they feel part of, of something that's bigger than themselves, which is why most of them joined the service to begin with. And this continues on that sense of added purpose. So I was going to provide a fact sheet, but I don't think I need to because uh, the commander mentioned uh, again a lot of the good from scholarships that are awarded to students. Yeah, I think we understand it. We're right. To try and limit these. Okay, sorry. I know. Okay, I just wanted to say that um, to beg you to please consider everything that has been said, and that I pray that your decision will stand in support of the veterans and that we make this work. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is James Lopez, L-O-B-E-Z, 2143 Mallard Lane, Hanover Park. I am a member of this post and I have been since 2001. 
I have to agree, and I can't say anything more than what my commander, Leo, has mentioned. I thank Ms. Anderson, though, in wanting to discuss the upbringing of, of, of establishing or bringing up new codes in regards to the RVs, how businesses, corporations, CEOs are using those RVs to do the work. I'd like to thank Mr. Moran for bringing up the thought or the, the thought of people using and spending the RVs on one or two, maybe even three nights at our campgrounds, right? Leo mentioned Harvest Host. I know you're going to bring that up in the future in the next meeting, all right? But however, I want the board to know Harvest Host is not something we created. It is a national program throughout the United States. My wife and I have met some of these people coming from the Northeast on their way to the West Coast. Yes, sir. I did not bring up staying campground. No, sir. But you mentioned overnight parking. Right. Right. Those, that's Harvest. That is Harvest Host. They're living in these vans for a night or two. They're on their way from going cross country, right? Like I'm, the audience, you did say yes. I said that I did not. Well, you brought up the the, the, the fact. Up, yes. The right, sir. They're right. They're not. They're not. Harvest host is another yeah, program that was mentioned. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, I just wanted to separate the two. Yeah, no, I All right. So, like I said, it's a national program. We have met people going cross country. And I am also a member of the Hannibal Park Veterans Committee, where our chairman, his sister from Colorado, traveling through to the East Coast, learned that we are members of the Harvest Host. So we welcome them. And they share enough spent the night with us. And they thoroughly enjoyed their stay knowing that they had a place to park to continue on to their journey and then to meet the members of the post as well. Okay. I know you will be discussing that in your next meeting with my commander, right? but I just wanted you to be aware. It is a national program, not created by us. You know, just if we we understand the values of the VFW and what they are doing in that, if we could really just get down to why you're for or against it based on these conditions, I think it's going to go. Uh, because I've heard enough now, and I've been in enough VFW halls in my life, so I know how they are. I know why I live there. I know why other people go. So we don't need all that. I think the people that are here want to know why. You should we should grant the conditional use for why we should deny it and that i'm going to start limiting it to that my name is laura lopez mrs lopez my husband jim our daughter yvette and her granddaughter i'm a very proud military wife mother and grandmother member auxiliary member of the post lived 2143 you know, I, I know, You're and saying, I have to say, I'm for the condition you're against. I'm for it for All right. big reason, many reasons. And one of, one of them is that when my husband got out of the Air Force, when he retired, and we came to live in Hanover Park, we moved in there in 2002. To this day, we're just now starting to meet some of the neighbors because they're new neighbors. No one has ever given us a welcome, a hello. Can I help you? Is there any? When we joined the post, I was a little leery about it, okay? But I did join, and I'm not sorry that I did, because I have never been made to feel more at home than anywhere else. I am definitely for it, because we've met a lot of wonderful people. It's good for the community, it's good for the post, I can't see how it would hurt anyone in any way. Not everyone is perfect. We're not perfect. 
but we can be there for one another and help each other. That's all I have to say. All right. I, I, for, for the purpose of this meeting, we'll accept that it's a well, warm and welcoming. It helps the vets and they do great things in the, in the uh, community. So we don't need to hear that again. If there's something else to add to it, people, but let's start. Are we done in this, the front row? Yeah, right. well, we, I, I said I'm going to do the rows. And well, I made this gentleman wait, and he had a meeting. You know, so Thank you very much. I know you're sitting there. there. Were you sitting in the row? No, I'm standing right here. So far. All right, well, in that row. The only birds get the world. Thank you very much. My name is Mike Stapinski, S-T-A-P-I-N-S-K-I, and I'm for the bill. Um, I am a trailer owner that, that parks my trailer there. Um, my, I have a family of four. Uh, we had no place to park our trailer. Uh, places are very expensive. So I talked to Leo, and uh, I was able to... I might have been one of the first there. Um, two other people other than I have campers there that I know we don't we don't um, let anybody go on our campers. We give the keys to our to, to them so in case they need to move it for some, any reason, uh, they're able to move move our campers. Um, pe people say that our campers do not move. My camper moves twice a year, and it may look like it sits there, but I go for a week here and a week there. So it may look like it's always there, but it's not hooked to electric. It is, uh, we go there and um, we may uh, cover it or do some uh, a repair or two on it. Um, or I bring it to my house, sorry. I live at zero uh, N three, seven, six Moore street in Wheaton. I live about two blocks away. Um, my son is an Eagle Scout and they, they've helped us um, my son has Eagle Project there, let us use their, their parking lot. My son also has his friends park at uh, uh, Wheaton, uh, they go to Wheaton North and they park there. Um, I am a harvest host because of, of uh, the VFW and it's been great. We ran a, um, we went on a long trip and uh, they, they check your background. They, they check your, not like your, criminal history, but they check your background. Do you have dogs? Are you uh, family friendly or do you, uh, you know, what, what, what they ask a lot of questions for you to be able to be a, become a harvest host. You have well, to, you have to. That, that's not really important to us. Okay. Uh, I think one thing that we'll make clear too is, especially since you said you live in Wheaton proper. Yes. You can't park your RV on the drive. Correct. In the unincorporated areas of DuPage, we don't allow parked in the front driveways or something like that. Correct. So now it's becoming, we're trying to weigh does being able to raise some money do it. I think, you know, your, your comments now kind of brought to my mind, it's there 50 out of 52 weeks. And it's there because you really just, I, I'm weighing that it raises money for the VFW, but you don't want to pay for a storage area. So I think that's what we got to take into a thing. And then you're covering it and different things. That becomes, it could be a nuisance or a, a, an undesirable site. Mm -hmm. So I think these are thoughts that we will weigh if people want to bring up their own on this, that's there. But uh, okay. that's what we're going to consider on the conditional use. The you know, There's two of them there for the cars and for the RVs. And having said that, that's the going through my mind. So if people want to get up and you want to address it one way or the other, maybe that's something you want to weigh in on. Also, I, I do pay. Um, it is a donation. that They don't request that we pay any amount, but we do try and take care of them because they're taking care of us. And also, um, uh, I can't think of anything else, but I, I, I approve. And thank you for getting rid of me. Now I can go to hockey. Hi there. Dale Bianco, one north five on Turnberry Lane, Winfield, Illinois. First, I want to thank you, uh, the people on this, this uh, committee, because I have sat in these chairs and, and emotionally charged meetings like this are very tedious. 
Um, I think the best thing we can do, because there's obviously a lot of people here who support, and the stories are very emotional, many of them. And there's people here who live near there, and their stories are emotional. You're talking about their house. The best thing that this we can do for these folks is to let them understand our arguments under the law, right? And the facts are, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Ketter, but the facts are, this has been here for 70, 90 years. It's a existing non-conforming use of the county ordinances. And the county goes out of its way to try to make sure that people that are still in unincorporated parts of the county can you know, make their lives work without having to continually come and pound them on an ordinance all the time. When you make changes to your property, though, you're subject at that point to review and conformance, right? So uh, in this case, the impetus for this discussion was a complaint of a neighbor who, in their mind, has a valid complaint, and it's their right to bring it up whether you agree or not. But the real issue, as I see it, are the post needs to stay alive to serve our community. And if it's going to do so, it needs to generate revenue, because last time I checked, the people in the neighborhood aren't coming over every day to have a beverage, which is really the only regular way that you can make money as a post. There is a good base of membership. It almost all, other than a few people I heard from Hannibal, is from Wheaton. I don't have a dog in this fight, quite frankly, because I don't, I'm not a Vietnam veteran, but I've used that post for years. Baseball meetings or Cub Scout stuff or fundraisers. And by the way, if you really want to speak to VFW, we have a fundraiser on the 22nd. Um, and, uh, and I'm organizing it. I'm an independent guy. I even have a membership there. But I love these people and what this company, what this uh, organization represents. So there's two things on the table. There's three things on the table. One, can I drive up, park my RV overnight? Not even for discussion. You guys don't have to consider that, right? Am I correct? It's not going to be considered. It's not in the petition. It's not in, at this time. It's not in the petition. We want to be able to put cars for students at Wheaton North High School, and I think there was pointed out that maybe there's some enforcement of unwritten rules that could be done better by the VFW. And I speak, I know I speak for Leo when I say that's reasonable. Make sure the jokers don't park in the middle of the street or in the middle of the grassy area or what have you. Whatever is reasonable, and then you know the parking of those RVs on property. Again, it's a revenue source for for the for the uh, post. You can always find new revenue sources and we're working on it. Uh, I already offered to help Leo chair a capital campaign where we're going to go out to the community and ask for donations so we can get that parking lot right. He wants that parking lot brand new too. It's $170,000 and quite frankly, that's a five or six years of the entire budget of the, of the, of the post. So I think if, if we can keep those people parking there, keep the, the uh, community served by this post, then we're going to absolutely have compliance with the conditional use. And once you can, once you uh, agree with that or don't agree with either way, it ends up at the, at the county board, we could have another meeting like this again. So, and that's where all these emotional stories will be, pen, will be beneficial because those guys, they want to get done and get out of here. They got, they got an agenda as long as you're armed. So the real issue is- They read the entire record. Well, right, exactly. I mean, we should put, I'd like to say that we'd like the county board to read the entire record. At, <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm, I'm clearly for it. The law is clear. Thank you. And I'll just say this. Cars are parking there. You're coming from there. I, I turned this man down. So why don't you go next? Because we'll continue at the end of that row. Here's what I'm going to say. The cars are being parked there from the school. That seems like a community thing and they make money off it. You have five RVs and you the first witness is I park it there, it moves two, two months a year. I cover it and I, it, I, it, I, I give a donation. So it, it is probably a donation and I hate to sound skeptical, but you write it off. But it, I, it, I'd like proof that it is really a money maker because if he had to park in an RV in it, the, the, the cost of that, even if he gave you half of that, then it becomes a money maker. So having said that, maybe council wants to do that in your recap. You can fit, add to that. Go ahead, sir. John Miller, 1 in 010 Street, uh, right across the street from the VFW Post. Uh, I am in favor of the conditional use. Uh, first of all, like you said, having students parked there 
has been something that's been going on. It's helpful for the community. It's helpful for the students. Uh, I have three children, two of which have already gone through Wheat North. They've parked there. We didn't used to live there. We didn't let them drive across the street. That'd be stupid. Um, so they parked there. Their friends parked there. It's, it makes no sense to change that at all. It helps everybody out. It doesn't cause any difference. If you don't let us do that, then those students will be parking somewhere else in the cul-de-sac, wherever else they they think they'll get ticketed, but they're going to cause a problem with it by putting their cars there. From what I understand, we said, okay, right now, no overnight parking at all. Nobody's living in any of these RVs. That's done. Then what we've come up with is those last five RVs and the four trailers, which they said they're going to move back over here behind the building so that it's obstructed from view from everybody. There's no way, if you go by there, there's no way from that uh, community that you can see those RVs. There's no way from the coming on the other way from Patworth that you see those RVs because of the trees there. It's completely obstructed. If we don't have it there for the Boy Scouts, we won't be able to continue that service. And we do make money off of those RVs. I'm not privy to the treasury, but I do know that we do make money off that because that's what we've been talking about. I also know that we had to close down and we had to deal with COVID. And I'm also a fundraiser by nature. That's my job. And I know how hard that is and how hard we are doing working to try and bring funds into the VFW to continue this. And I know that this would be a hardship for the VFW to the point that, yes, indeed, it would probably close. So I think it's a reasonable compromise that they move those RVs back there where they cannot be seen and to continue the parking with the students there. For everybody that's up in arms going down, we're not really looking for a reasonable compromise. We're looking if this in fact is an acceptable condition to be granted. So they'll come up here at Long Flame. That's what we're looking for. All right. Where are we at in the second row? <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Jim Claus, K L A U S. I live at 2060 Wyndham Circle. Um, I do have one question to start off. In this proposal, is this all or nothing? Is is it both approval of the offsite storage or the offsite parking and RV storage? Two conditionals. Okay. One for the, the cars and then the one for the uh, RVs and the uh, okay, so I would agree with parking for the, the cars. I do not agree with or do not support parking of RVs. Um, in reference to one of the questions that was asked before about the monitoring and how we monitor what happens after this, um, I think as a community, we're asking for something better. The citation was issued in May of 2021. It's been over 18 months till we've gotten to this point and RVs have continued to be parked on property with people inhabiting them for more than one night at a time in those 18 months. There has been no policing and no governing of what has happened there, and nothing has changed since that citation was issued. Um, second, it takes a lot for the men and women. Thank you for standing up and supporting. I'm nervous, if you haven't noticed already. Um, I'm not against vets. My father served in Nam. Um, um, I'm not against vets, and I think most of the people here can say the same thing. We do not expect the VFW to fail. We're not trying to get it to fail. For the most part, I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone, but what I believe people are against is people staying in RVs on property, which isn't explained well in this proposal, and that's what we're really against. Um, Again, nervous being up here. There's a lot of people in the room. Thank you for your service to the community. Um, but there has been some harassment against people who have been perceived as being the, the complainers in the community. Online harassment on Facebook, and I don't know if it's elsewhere, but that has been that has been out there. I am scared for myself to put my name and my address out there in terms of getting harassed. So I want to make that clear for the people that are coming up here and speaking that, that I'm not very comfortable doing it, but I'm doing this on behalf of the community. Thank you. Um, 
So quick story and then to the point, um, I moved in in 2010. Unless it's going to get to the issue of condition. I get on, I think I'm going to do pretty soon. And I hate because, but I think it was pretty much around it. I'm going to start doing a timer of three minutes because the stories aren't needed unless you're going to say that your story was you walked out and there were people living in these things and throwing a party or something. Just when you moved in and everything else, unless it goes to the heart of the condition, I think we don't need it. Okay. And when I moved That's in. That's for everybody, not just this gentleman. I moved in in 2010. I did not recognize, I don't know for certain, but I did not recognize that RVs or other vehicles were parked in the lot. There might have been trailers, Boy Scout trailers, et cetera, and that was fine, and that wasn't an, an issue at the time. Um, so this isn't like moving next to the airport and complaining about noise. The attorney said that they had been parking there for years and decades, and I think Leo contradicted him in, this, in his statement that it, it did start fairly recently that the RV parking had started. Now that's an important part point. And if you the rest of you want to you can just agree with it. The, the underlying theme was this has gone on forever, and they have an accepted practice until unless they were to change something. If you're saying this started up recently, that that undermines it. So. That's a good point, and if that was the story, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, and if other people agree with it, all you have to do is say you agree with his comments. Thank you. Um, so, again, I'd, I'd rather not see uninhabited RVs parked there for a year um, uh, next to my property, sure. But I can live with that. Um, it's really just the uninhabited uh, RVs. Um, Two concerns. First is, as one woman had mentioned earlier, um, there has been a van with a family living in it for over a year. The authorities have been contacted, um, and I just, one concern for the family, hope that they are taken care of. Um, second is the inhabited RVs do exist. They stay multiple days. We can't take anybody's vetting for who lives there. Um, with all due respect, I appreciate that there is a van life. There are people, CEOs, teachers, firemen, whoever travels and lives in a van. But so does Ryan Laundry or Laundry, right? So we don't know who's coming and going. They come all day and all night. They stay for multiple days. We, we've heard that. If you, if all you had to do is say you agree with it. I'm going to so, try and start narrowing this down because I want to give everybody a chance rather than come back for another night. So... Unless you have something new to add, then why don't you just wrap it up and we'll move on. Okay. Um, so uh, that that is really it. Uh, if it's parked RVs, um, that is not the safety concern. It's a matter of having these inhabited RVs and not having them monitored in any way in our community, next to high schools, next to teenagers. And um, therefore, I do not agree with that citation or with that proposal. Thank you. And going forward, if you're going to get up and you say parking the RVs and that there, you might want to explain why you don't want them. Just parking RVs to me doesn't mean anything. If they're infringing on your enjoyment of your property or things of that nature, that's what comes in under the conditional use. That would be the reason you would object. Well, I can tell you something. I, when I counted the room, I counted about 21 people want to speak. We're already at number 11, and we're still in the second row. Is how many more are left to speak? I'm going to try and figure this out. Okay, I'm going to start a timer. People are going to be limited to three minutes because we have a standing rule that we usually go two hours because we're coming from work and we, we don't want to get to the point where we're tuning out or something else. With seven more, if we limit the talk, we can, then we're still pushing two and a half hours. So make your things as concise as you can and we'll move on from there. Three minutes. <laughs> um, Melissa Cox, COX. Uh, I live at 2041 Wyndham Circle in Wheaton. I've lived at that current address across the street from the petitioner for nearly 11 years. Uh, firstly, we have no problem and have never had a problem with the high schoolers parking there. Um, I understand that they were cited because there's um, unimprovements made to the parking lot. So as long as they make those improvements, I don't see why that can't continue. 
Um, however, I am here today to voice my opposition to the proposed request for the um, to allow the RV parking and open storage. Um, I think we've touched on the fact that like um, they are a harvest host. There are people living there and staying there. Um, so I don't want to touch on that. Um, but we are team no sleep in my house. I have a daughter that's up all night. Uh, so we see a lot of things. Uh, we see RVs come in in the middle of the night. They park and then we see cars come in. They'll stay for a couple minutes and then they'll leave. And then another car will show up. They'll stay for a couple minutes and then they'll leave. And this is alarming. I'm a parent to two young kids and I don't know what's going on across the street. Um, in regards to even the RVs that are stored on the lot, we have seen um, several RVs dump waste liquids on the petitioner's property, um, which I don't think anybody would want to live next door to that. Uh, we've had multiple sleepless nights due to the use of generators. Uh, when some of the RVs show up, um, they use it for heating or air conditioning, and it's very loud, and you can't escape that sound. Um, I think we touched on the fact that uh, the RVs are parking where there's a lot of school bus stops in close proximity, which is a concern. Uh, we've touched on the property value, which I think we can all agree, you know, uh, it's going to diminish the property value if it turns into a trailer park. Um, you know, I think it's important to note that many people within our community did not feel comfortable um, standing up tonight to voice their concerns because of fears of retaliation by the petitioner. Um, neighbors have been threatened with lawsuits for harassment for simply voicing their concerns to the petitioner. Uh, my family and I have been subject to a very vitriolic social media campaign led by the petitioner over the matter being discussed today. It was alleged that I am the only person that made complaints formally to the DuPage County, and I've made none. Um, well, I just say regardless, if you made it, you had the right to make it. We right. don't condone harassment. I would hope that veterans who fought for people's rights would not violate people's rights. I have pictures here with the threats that my family has received, if you'd like to take a picture. I, I, I'll introduce that as okay. uh, objectors exhibit one, we have two. Okay. How do we establish, Mr. Chairman, where they came from? I don't know if she can stand. She got them, and she then I'm going to allow them in. Okay, but that could come from anybody. Somebody okay. in response to the BMW's post. In your argument, I deny it. Okay, I overrule it. May I continue? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, because of these thinly veiled threats um, and these false allegations and damage to our reputation. Um, we received advice from the state's attorney's office who was monitoring the situation as well as DuPage County. And they encouraged us to alert the police department of what was going on. And they provided patrol for our home and for our neighborhood. So in regards to your nuisance clause, I think that that is um, fairly uh, alarming. Um, Just, in, and then I'll give you mm -hmm. additional time. Yep. You heard when they went through the things about what you can't impair the supply of lighter air. Mm -hmm. You can't increase the hazards. No, you can't diminish land values. Yeah. I, I, I don't think the, the traffic becomes of it because if they weren't driving in there, they'd be driving to the school. Right. Uh, we don't care about the high school parking. I, we've never but it, but it impairs public health. Mm -hmm. public welfare safety mm -hmm. if it infringes on your enjoyment or your property those are the issues that we want to hear from we're hearing why it's good for the community if as a objector you have it those are the kind of points you should make we've kind of touched on them um and we'll go from there uh i i, I would just say in the most strenuous way of all i really find fault with people being harassed I was harassed on this board over something and I didn't take kindly to it and I didn't go out looking for them though either. But this is something, and I'm gonna allow it in just because it I find it abhorrent. And she got them. I don't find anything wrong with her credibility, so she can put them in. You want to cross-examine her? That's your right. If you want to prove they're wrong, if you think you can prove she's done to herself, fine. Looking at her demeanor, I find that hard to believe. And I cut the other sport person that spoke. I think people are uh, Worried about getting up and speaking, and it should never be, especially with a veterans group doing this. You fought to defend this. How can we go against it? I would like to see you get up and, and, and speak to your members and the public in general that it is not an acceptable thing because it's not as far as I'm concerned. So 
I'm off my grandstand. Uh, it's not for that. It's in, and I should have done it, but it's a personal opinion. How do you know she's telling the truth? You're a friend of me. She's no better than I told you why I'm not a man. All right. Thank you. Bye. That's not a team. All right. Go ahead. That goes back to somewhat the intimidation issue, and I apologize that I. It by seeing flip it, but it didn't see. I didn't see a problem with it then because I took it face value. Now I can see it. So we will, and if it comes to anybody who feels uncomfortable, bring it to my attention and we'll take some type of action. Um, Mr. The petitioner has made comments um, about me to my husband, disparaging comments um, about said social media posts. He's made comments to my young children while they're playing in their backyard. Well, um, I'm going to cut you off. Now that's fine. Because I understand that these details are personal, but they've all, always also been made very public. Okay. And some of these threats I've received have, are from people in this audience now. It's terrifying to be up here, but I felt the need to clear my name. I make no complaints. Don't worry about it. It's safe. Okay. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I, we have to be here. We'll escort you to your car. I appreciate uh, that. Uh, oh, come on. You know what? I'm going to start getting comments from the crowd. So if you want to comment, go out and have me on the hallway, comment all you want. You're not going to do it out loud here. When you, you then you get up, you might have a problem with me, you say it. I'm doing what I feel is right, and I'm trying to make every citizen have their full rights. And if you feel infringed, I apologize, but I believe her, unless you can prove she lied, she shouldn't be subjected to that. And nobody should be afraid or intimidated from coming into the public hearing and voicing their own opinions. If you take exception with that, it's bad. Go ahead. We understand the VFW's role in the community and have had no issues with them for the best part of a decade um, until this current iteration. We appreciate their need to generate revenue, but feel their business practices should not have deleterious effect on the surrounding neighborhood. The complaints and subsequent violations were no first noted two years ago. There's been three adjudication hearings and one circuit court hearing where the judge found them liable for these citations. But they've continued to operate, right? But they've continued to operate in opposition. Yeah. The process is small, but all court processes are small. I say that it's an attorney, and I know and I take advantage of it sometimes, and I hate it enough. Sure. But that's how it is, and that's why they're here. So. Yeah. So that these concerns are heard and considered when making your adjudication, as well as ensuring the decisions made by the board are strictly adhered to by the petitioner. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, done with that roll. All right, decide, next roll. Okay. Okay. If you then we'll consider you as part of the second row of action. Good evening. My name is Mark Tobias, T O B I A S, 3 South 306 Shagbark in Glen Ellen. I'm a retired police officer and learned of the BFW Lodge over the years driving by. And when they had a fish fry, I went in and started seeing people there that. I knew as other officers, as other elected officials throughout the county and became a place where I bring my family for burger night or for fish fry when they had it. I would highly recommend the neighbors, if you haven't already, come over, see what it's about. There's no smoking inside, first of all. There are, are slot machines, but it's permitted by the county. When you say that the citations were issued and that they didn't adhere, I believe that as it goes through the appeal process, there is no adherence until something is decided here. So in that point, I object to people continually saying they're not conforming to the citation because that's the process. Like he said, it takes a while. Having been a police officer, I know that too. 
you talked about things on the internet. Who knows where they come from, if there are people in this room or not. And I'm sure there's been comments from both sides, back and forth. There has, I've seen it. So please let's get past that anger. Let's just talk about those issues about parking the kids there and not. I sell asphalt now. I've been working with them, trying to get things going to make it more presentable, being a nice hard surface there. Unfortunately, air conditioner, the roof, the gutters, and now legal fees are hampering them. They want to work with the community. They want to stay with the community. Please consider that. And if you're, you're so moved, give some donations to them to help improve the area around your house. They're not your enemies. Can I put you on the spot? And if you yes. feel like I put you on the spot, just so you can go get down. On your, when you've gone there for the different things, have you ever noticed people living in the RVs or extension ports got to them? I haven't paid attention to the RVs. I go in for what we're going for. We went to the Christmas party the other night. I don't go back there and look. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, you were the end of that row. Yeah, right here. Thank you. Right, yeah, I, I cut her out. So just before we go out, we have you and this young woman. Okay, and who's left? One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, I have about two minutes of written material. I can go through it all, or I can just cut it down. And how about if you have us a version of it and that's submitted? Yes, your own exhibit. Fair enough. My name is Bianca Yeager, Y-E-A-G-E-R. I live in the Renew Apartments in downtown Wheaton. I just moved in about four weeks ago. I'm originally from Elmhurst. So my residence through my 21 years in the Army was here in DuPage County. I've stayed loyal to this county. I became a lifetime member at this VFW this summer. Because as a combat veteran, I suffered from illnesses, health issues, one of those things being PTSD. When I came to the VFW, I, can't, I, I actually found the VFW in Wheaton through the Harvest Toast program. The very first day I walked through the doors, Leo and all of these people you see sitting behind you welcomed me with open arms. I know what the reputation of BFWs can be. And I think some of you, if not all of you can admit that without experiencing the BFW, you listen to the rumors that there are a bunch of beer drinking, cigarette smoking, rowdy bunch of jokers. And yes, I will, I'll tell you, veterans can get a little rowdy because we, we've seen some stuff. So there are some nights maybe you shouldn't come, but I will tell you there is a sense of community in that building that has caused me over the last couple of months to call them my second family, to call it my second home. It is my safe place. And my family's thrilled that I found it. I cannot speak to what has happened on, you know, before I arrived at this VFW. I will tell you that nobody I know in this group of veterans condones harassment, condones whatever, but I can't speak for them. I can only speak for myself. What I hope, wherever I go, is that there's a sense of community. Because my van, see, Leo, I will admit, I stayed for four nights because Leo let me stay as I found an apartment because I'm about to venture into more surgeries. And the easiest way for me to look for an apartment close to the VFW to become a member of the Wheaton community was to stay there. I was self-contained. I didn't dump. I didn't do any of that stuff. But I do recall when we had our trunk or treat, I don't know if anybody in this group here showed up, but there were several people that brought their kids across the street and had no problem being on the property, taking candy for their kids from combat veterans. And I think the kids really enjoyed it. So it's contradictive to kids not being safe on our property. Are they safe at 10 p.m. on a Friday night during karaoke? No. Not that they would be unsafe, they just don't belong there. If it's not your thing, that's fine. 
but I am for allowing what Leo has spoken about, because if we don't continue to generate that revenue, we are done. And you will take a safe place away from, hold on, let me look up the number. This is, it, DuPage County has, hold on, told you, I had, yeah. We'll get it from you later. 20, 28,658 veterans in DuPage County. In Wheaton alone, there's 100, 1,638 veterans. You take our VFW away from us, we got nowhere to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, the last thing I was going to say was hopefully we can work together as neighbors. That's all I have. Let me just say one thing. I think I'm not aware of it, and I've been a resident, I'm embarrassed to admit, for 56 years, 65 years of this in the DuPage County. I've never known of any deaths at the uh, DFW Hall. Am I right? Debt. 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 Nobody was ever killed on your property. No. No. Just a quick, that's a quick question. One person. Yeah. One person? One person. Okay. The veteran traveling through. Like the one that. Okay. It just, it just goes to my, the issue that's been brought up. I don't think it's for that people there are creating a safety issue. The veterans. Okay. Good evening. My name is Peyton Miller, M I L L E R. I am in support of the post. My address is 1N010 Darling Street. I've been a part of this post since I was born. And since my grandfather passed away when I was 11, I've been volunteering at this post consistently. When I was a student at Wheaton North, I can say that the opportunity that the post offers to park is an amazing asset. If the parking lot wasn't available, I know many students would have no place to park. I ask that you please allow them to continue that, this opportunity for our students. As for the RVs and trailers, I live across the street from the post. I see no issues with the RVs and trailers parking in the parking lot. It's not hurting anyone and it's not affecting anything at all. They're just being stored. And I ask that you please allow for the student parking and the storage of the RVs at VFW. And since the social media was brought up, I will say that we were told by the VFW leadership not to name any names and not to harass in any way of any kind. That's all. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Andrew Baumhauer. Uh, I live in 1935 4th Street. Yeah, B-A-U-M-H-A-U-E-R. I'm four houses south of the property. Um, I store my RV on that property. Um, I moved in in 2012. Um, when I moved in, we were aware of the fact that, that the VFW was storing RVs on that property. Um, they had trailers for various things. Um, two years ago, I approached uh, the post to ask them if I could store an RV there and getting them to do that, which I did. I could I could move my RV anywhere I want. Obviously, it's not like I can't afford to put it anywhere, but I wanted to support the uh, the VFW and what they were doing. Um, in the I have two uh, high school students that are there. I've never been worried about them ever being on that property. It's been very enjoyable. They've been a great neighbor. I I knew what they were before we we moved there. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we chose to move there and also choose, chose to move by the high school. Uh, so I am in favor of their continued use for parking for high school. I would not like to see 75 students parking elsewhere on the roads. Um, that is a big concern that my wife and I had as a family, having cars parked on Papworth Street 
Um, there's a lot of kids that cross back and forth there. It would be bad for cars to be in that area. I know there's a tremendous amount of no parking. Um, every time we have a big game, we have people come to our house and ask to park in our driveway to, to uh, get there. So the lack of that overflow is, is going to be a big deal. Um, as far as, you know, I heard people saying that there's dumping of, of waste down there. Um, if there was anybody dumping any waste down there, that's that would be disgusting. I would go down and seriously confront Leo around that. Um, I have never seen that. I check that lot on a regular basis because obviously we don't want our property damaged. It is super convenient to be 800 feet away from uh, property you own. So um, I guess that's what I have to say. I'm in favor for both of them. Um, if they were to move how it was situated, that would be fine also. I think the issue comes from is uh, the biggest complaints are we don't want to look out and see something. Um, so maybe if we can deal with uh, that, that's not gonna be an issue. Thank you. That's a question while he's coming out. Huh? May I ask, make a statement as he's coming out? All right, go ahead. Um, so if this no longer, if the post didn't exist, look into the, the, the attorney, what would you guys do with this four acre property? So that's interesting. If we were to lose our property, it would be sold to a land builder to build homes. And what does that you know, mean? I, I want to stop this. We're getting way outside. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want the record in any way tainted. What, it, 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 we're not going to vote just because we worry what you're going to do with the property or anything else. I'm just, try, just trying to go. They talked about the, the gentleman just spoke about the ability to look out and, and have space. So I'm getting it. So, thank you. You answered my question. Hello. Hello, my name is Vlad Kompanets and uh, K-O-M-P-A-N-E-T-S. I live on 520 Amy Lane. Board, thank you for staying late today. I know it's a, it's a long night here, but um, I'm for the school parking against RV parking. Uh, uh, I feel that RV parking creates additional transiency that creates additional risk to the adjacent properties. And uh, there needs to be a way to uh, have accountability and uh, responsibility for that risk. As far as I could tell, there is no risk accountability at this point in time. What assurances can we make that that will change right now? Thank you. We have about two left. Oh, my, I'll be real quick, Mr. Kevin. Uh, thanks, board, for staying so late. Um, I do not want to vote on either. Brian Miles Hacker, I live at 29 W759 Billingham Drive in Warrenville, Illinois. I am a member of Post 2164 uh, as an auxiliary member. I volunteer there often. Um, I, I Like I say, I can't vote because I don't live in the area, but I do support the Post and I support the community as well. I grew up in Wheaton. You should feel safe in your community. And there should be some kind of a happy medium. All things aside, I just want to remind everybody that there's sign-in sheets in the back. Whether you're for or against the sheet, please make sure. Or I mean, for the uh, the, the proposition for the um, for the uh, temporary parking, please make sure you sign whether you're for or against it. That's that's all I have to say. You've had your task. Yeah, I'm thinking I or everybody will get up with one more time. <laughs> Where are we in the crowd? Okay. Did, was there some woman I cut out? Okay. You'll be next, sir. Hi, I'm Lynn Allen at 1960 Darling Street. So I walk past there all the time with my dog. I am totally for the high school parking, but I'm not in favor of the um, RVs to be parked there. I think it's, it's not nice looking for the neighborhood, but if they're going to move them behind the trees, then that's not an issue. But I do know there are have been all summer long, there were people um, the last couple of years that stayed more than two or three nights. And they were parking along the gravel road as well as 
being in the parking lot where they're parked and the cords would be um, running wherever. And um, the woman who said about the generators making noise, they do make noise. And if you like your windows open at night, it's very loud. Um, I just think that they should not be allowed to have anybody staying in the RVs. And as long as they park them out of sight, then it's not an issue. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Robert Tatro, T is and Tom, A-T-R-O. Live at 1S531 Swan Lake Court, New York. Uh, I am the scoutmaster for Troop 34. And when we, we were one of the St. Michael's troops that uh, needed a home very quickly. Uh, as far as family friendliness, Leo reached out right away and told us that absolutely he would make room. I thought it was a long shot because they already hosted other ones. So uh, we proactively bring the scouts to that location. I, I don't live nearby. I, have, I don't have the same experience, but we have scouts from sixth grade through high school. We bring them there in the evening every week for their meeting. We've never had any issues. Leo gave us heads up. There are tra there are tra uh, trailers and um, um, the, uh, campers on the property. He told us that on the first time we met with them, so we were aware of that. And uh, obviously, scouts come with a lot of equipment, so we've got you know that we're we're hoping to be able to get our, our trailer there also, and you know for storage because camping and taking care of the scouts requires a lot of equipment. Uh, the cleanliness, we absolutely, as a matter of fact, the very first meeting that Leo had with us, they have a cleanup in the spring and in the fall. And he solicited us to say, we would like you to come to help clean up the property, keep it looking good. And we had our troop there. It was an all, it was a weekend, was Saturday and Sunday, that our troop was out there cleaning up with the other troops, cleaning up the property to make it look nice. Because um, I'm absolutely all for that. Um, it helps build the character for the, for the scouts. Um, and uh, the, the the main thing we always wanted to get across is that uh, obviously when we needed help, Leo and the staff at the VFW reached out. Um, the uh, and and to have them there has been an absolute benefit. We did reach out to other community organizations. We did not get taken up by them. We needed something. They were there. Anything that can be done to help keep them running, to keep, help support. We're a nonprofit too. We rely on donations. And right now we have to pay for storage, which all the popcorn that you buy, some of that money is going to pay as opposed to being able to utilize that for the scouts, for the younger guys that are out there. So I've never felt the kids were in any danger. Safety is paramount for the scouts. And we look at that. And, and when I first got there too, it's like, I'm keeping my eye open. When the lights, because the lights aren't always on in the parking lot, and I, I like to have them on for the safety of the kids, like any parking lot where they would be. And I and we watch out for them. The same at the VFW, the same thing we did at St. Michael's Church. If the scout's waiting for a parent, we wait with them. And the same thing here. We don't, we, we haven't treated them any differently to say that we're extra frightened or scared by the by the kids being in that neighborhood. Because every location has its, it has its issues, but I've never had any... Uh, um, um, adversarial uh, um, confrontation with anyone there or uh, anything like that with the, with the vehicles that have been there and the people. Thank you. All right. We're going down the road. Who's All right. Is the gentleman walking down? Did you, was he going to speak, speak, sir? No. No. Off the fifth row. All right, just come on up. I'm assuming you're the last one now. Anybody else? Okay. Ranjan Basraju. Uh, last name is K-O-S-A-R-A-J-U. 2040 Windham Circle. Uh, I just have a question on these uh, uh, parking is it what uh, short term parking, long term parking? I mean, is it like five days uh, parking? You know, if it's five days, uh, people can come. My understanding is the student parking is by the day, 
functions or a football game. The Boy Scout trailers are parked full time unless they're out on some type of uh, undertaking. And the van and the mobile homes, there's five of them. I know one's parked here 50 weeks a year. I don't know about the other four. Right. I, I have no problem with the school in parking. Uh, the Darby's, uh, if it's you know, five days, you know, it will you know, go in there all, all the time. Or if it's, uh, you know, if it's two weeks, uh, something like that, you know, with the shotgun parking, you know, there'll be a lot of traffic coming in and out of the parking place. All right. You'd rather have parked long the time so they're not coming in and out as often as that you're saying? Right. It, 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 if they're tucked in, tucked away, you know, behind the, you know. All right. So the, the, the guy that's there all but two weeks is perfect for you because he's not going in and out a lot. No, that, you know, it, it, it depends on the amount of time that they are allowed to park, uh, is what I'm saying. And uh, I'm not saying that long-term parking is good, but uh, you know, if if you allow, you know, just short-term parking, that, that also uh, allows for more uh, RVs going in and out of the area. Okay. Just a quick question. Are you talking about harvest host or are you talking about the RVs? Just RVs, uh, talking about RVs. Right now, I'm, I'm not picking on I really don't understand what your comment is. You just, do you, five days is good, but if you have five days, you don't uh, want them? Uh, I don't support um, having RVs uh, parked in there. Um, okay. And just, I haven't heard it. I want to be clear. Nobody objects to the scouts' trailers. Is that correct? Yes. Are you doing? Huh? All right. Then. All right. Because everybody, nobody really mentions the scout thing. So if you. It, it, would that alleviate all the problems if they parked in the back and they put screening up? For the scouts? Oh. All right. I, all right. I, I, I don't All right. Does anybody else want to speak? Okay, then. This is where the counselor you would make a closing statement. And it's my understanding, trying to understand what you saying, if I can clarify. I think we had an issue with harvest, it's not the RV story. I would like to, my closing statement, real quick. We addressed the, the suicide that happened with a trucker. It was a veteran from Texas, and the demons got to him. He stayed at BFWs throughout the country when he traveled because the other veterans would help him keep those demons at bay. That day, they got the best help. Okay? Yeah, and it happens. I just brought it up. 22 a day happened. I'm glad she brought it up because 22 a day happened. brought a light to 22 veterans a day commit suicide from the demons. Mm -hmm. And I don't appreciate that they try to use it against us, but I, I like the light. As far as harassment, as far as harassment, I spoke to Mr. Cox on the phone when this hit the internet. Mr. Cox told me he was being harassed on the internet. And he said threats were made to him or his family. I did not condone those, nor did my members. I hung up the phone with Mr. Cox, called the person who had this posted on their social media, and asked him, because I can't control what he does, asked him to remove it because he was not helping our cause. It was removed. And, okay, I can't control it. I didn't tell him to do it, but I was told it was removed that day. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I appreciate the feeling, but we're just on a closing statement now. So I, we do not condone harassment, okay? Again, I would like to reiterate, we will move the trailers to behind the building, and it's shielded by the, the trees. That's what people are saying, is they don't want to look out and see it. We are willing to do that. The reason we didn't do any of that right now is we were told specifically, leave everything the way it is during your appeal process. That's what we did. We are not slapping people in the face. We're not being disrespectful to anybody in the neighborhood. This is what we were told by the zoning department. That's what we did. So in closing, there's a motion. I get it. But we need to generate the revenue. 
the harvest host, we've agreed, I will stop. I will take care of that. The RV storage, people in the neighborhood use it. Yes, it's storage, Your Honor. Yes, sir. They, they might use it four weeks a year. They may use it five weeks a year, but it is still storage. And we can still put it behind the building where it won't be viewed. Anybody who has an RV isn't going to... You, you, we just poo-pooed the people who live in it full time and travel the country, but yet we want to poo-poo that the people actually work for a living and only use it three weeks a year. I can't, I can't have it both ways. So please, I'm, we we will accommodate what we can, and we appreciate the consideration. The funds we generate, we do generate a minimum of fifty dollars a month per RV and trip. It is funds, and those funds are used to support veteran causes. It allows us to give the space away for free to the community, as well as we were giving space to free for the homeowners association for the people you heard tonight against us. We've given, they have parked in our parking lot when their area was being black topped. We have been neighborly even to, it's all neighbors, okay? It was just in the last year, we didn't let them use our post one time last year. So, I thank everybody. I, I appreciate your time. I know it's late. I appreciate all the supporters. Thank you. We love you. What else? I, got, I just look at you. You, you hired you and gave me my money. I know. Why, you know, lawyers are going to talk. I just have a little comment. When people moved into the area, okay, everybody here. How many were here well, in 1932 when Post started? I doubt if anybody in this room. But you know, against the, the airport, the, the, against the airport, they were before the airport. You know, that's why we have zoning posts. It doesn't matter if you're there and just time does not automatically grant you something. You're correct, Your Honor. And to give you an idea, the property that Wyndham Circle sits on. My grandmother owned the, some of the property there, sold it to that builder. I can tell you her trailer and my father-in-law's tractor trailer were stored at the BMW. It, you know, it may have been a different time, but it's to show a point that has been going on since I was 13 years old and I'm 52. Okay. Right, I'll just make one comment, but that's why we have applicants coming in front of us for semi-truck parking. For RV parking because it's not permitted in a lot of the areas. So that's just I'll put that out there, and that's what we'll probably discuss at our meeting when we get ready to vote. Yeah, if we pass this, sir, if we pass this, sir, as you even said it, it sounds like they're upset with harvest host. <laughs> Uh, Hang on. The trailers from Harvest Host. No. I don't know. Oh, from their RV. They're, they're, uh, not. Somewhere I guess Harvest. The, the, the ones that spoke that made it clear, they're objecting to the five RVs that are parked here on a full time basis. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because what I'm getting from this, and I'm trying to add all this up. <laughs> I've got kids too, they're a little older now, though I am getting old. I'm thinking that it's the harvest host because I've seen stuff in here that says there's people living in these trailers. You're saying the five trailers, there's nobody living in them. So it's harvest host. You people right. are not dispute if they're living in the RVs or not. You can drive past there at any time. We're right down the street. You can look at the five trailers and see if anybody's living in them. But that harvest host, harvest host, the harvest host is something different. That is where full time RVers travel the country and will stay. We have agreed to stop that program. I just there you go. Because that. that's what would scare the me. Trailers that was... are stored along with the other trailers, we will agree to move behind the building and you will not see it in your house. And there is nobody living. That's what I'm saying, but nobody is living in that. So we needed that. Right. I'll tell you what, we needed that. We've heard both sides. That'll be for us the way. What has been presented yeah, and decide that? whether they're living in it, they're not living in it, whether they've closed the uh, threat, property values, the use of their uh, property, whatever, all the conditions to get these 
uh, either approved or voted down. Thank you. So and just call us one thing with the conditional yeah. use, okay. if it fits yeah. anywhere in the zoning district, this being um, R4, there would have to be a unique basis to deny the conditional use. So we will weigh the testimony and see if there are any unique factors for denial or if it's going to be voted in or if it's going to be partially voted in or voted in with conditions on it. I, you know, the, the, we can ask this for it. We can consider it that they wanted uh, screening that completely encloses that there's different things. We can put conditions on the county board, as Janice knows, can take it, just say, forget all your conditions. Uh, it, we're voting it up or down. So we would we made the record and we will give our recommendation to the county board. It will be our recommendation meeting. January 5th. January 5th. I guess we will meet in this room just in case everybody comes. There's no further testimony. There's no further discussion. The board debates it and votes on it. Unless we were to determine that we need additional evidence. Otherwise, it'll be voted on that night and then sent to the county board development committee, which is a committee within the county board that makes it a, a recommendation after hearing evidence, considering it to the full board. And the meeting, our recommendation meetings are not six o'clock, they are 5 30. But you can reserve this room, though, correct? Okay. It'll be in this room. All right, here's what I have to say. One thing. Of the objective record, the hearing is closed for testimony.